Now comes the main event, as I like to consider it, is that we have our gospel message and our very special Danny Desh Dean, our UMC certified lay speaker, going to be giving the message out today. Take it away, brother Danny. Thank you. Hello, everybody. How are y'all doing? It's going to take me a minute, and I have to turn on my back. Is it getting older? You don't seem to it's easier for me to pull my message up and get to where I want it and then send it back to y'all. How's everybody doing? <laughs> The message I'll be giving today is from the Old Testament. And usually, I want to use the Bible. That's what I'll be doing today is chapter six. In chapter six, in chapter six, it's Daniel in the lion's den. And I'm sure most everybody from the time we were growing up as a kid has always heard the story of Daniel and the lion's team. This is basically a third around 600 BC <clears throat> to around 500 BC. A lot of the things that went on at the time was Babylon. Babylon was an ancient city. It was a pagan city with a lot of sin and crime and everything. The story of Daniel in the lion's den. Learn from Daniel how to survive your own lion's den experience. Daniel, the lion's den, is one of the most famous stories in the Bible. Even though Daniel was an old man at the time in his 80s, he refused to take the easy way out of an abandoned God. The threat of an agonizing death did not change his trust in God. Daniel's name meant, God is my judge. And this miracle, God, not men, judged Daniel and found him innocent. Like under a question mark. Daniel was a follower of God, living in a world of ungodly. Temptation was always at hand. And as in the face of with temptation, it would be much easier to go along with the crowd and be popular. Christians living in today's sinful culture can readily identify with pain. You might be enduring your own personal den of lions right now, but remember that your circumstances are never a reflection of how much God loves you. Remember that your circumstances are never a reflection of how God loves you, loves us all. Something new. The key is not to put your focus on your situation, but on your all-powerful protector. Are you putting your faith in God? 
the rest of you. A little bit of background. The ancient Middle East was a story of one empire rising, falling, and being replaced by another. In 605 BC, the Babylonians conquered Israel, taking took many of the promising young men into captivity in Babylon. One of those men was Daniel. Some Bible scholars speculate that the Babylonian captivity was both an act of God's discipline for Israel and a way to teach them necessary skills in commerce and government administration. Even though the ancient Babylon was a pagan nation, it was a highly advanced and organized civilization. Eventually, the captivity would end. The Israelites would take their skills back home. When the lion's den even occurred, Daniel was in his 80s. Through a life of hard working and obedience to God. Hello? Oh, okay. Don't worry, I'll be there. Obedience to God. You know. Uh, he had risen to the political ranks as an administrator of his pagan kingdom. In fact, Daniel was so honest and hardworking that the other government officials, those who were jealous of him, could find nothing against him to cause him to be removed from office. So they tried to use Daniel's faith in God against him. They tricked King Darius into passing a 30-day decree that said anyone who prayed to another god or man other than the king would be thrown into the lion's den. Daniel learned of the decree, but did not change his habit. Just as he had done his whole life, he went home knelt down, faced towards Jerusalem, prayed to God. The wicked administrators caught him in the act and told the king. King Darius, who loved Daniel, tried to save him, but the decree could not be revoked. The Medes and the Persians had a foolish custom that once a law was passed, even a bad law, it could not be now, in the lion's den, at sundown, they threw Daniel into the den of lions. The king could not eat or sleep all night. At dawn, he ran to the lion's den and asked, Daniel, if your God had protected him, excuse me, God had protected him, Daniel replied, my God sent his angel and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me, because I was found innocent in his sight. Nor have I ever done anything wrong before you, O King. That is Daniel 6.22. Scripture says that the king was overjoyed that the prophet had survived his night with the wild beast. God had sent an angel shut the mouths of the lions. Daniel was brought out unharmed. Does he have trust in his God? Daniel 6, 23. King Darius had the men who falsely accused Daniel arrested. They were all thrown into the lion's skin where they were immediately killed by the beast. Because of the lion's skin, Darius reached this conclusion about God. For he is the living God, and he will endure forever. His kingdom will never be destroyed, and his rule will never end. He rescues and saves his people. He performs miraculous signs and wonders in the heavens and on earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. 
Daniel 6, 26 and 27. And this is King Darius that said this. He was the pagan king for the Medes and the Persians in Babylon. The king issued a decree ordering the people to fear and reverence the God of Daniel. Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and King Cyrus, the Persian after him. And I'm gonna read just a little bit of 626 on. I issue a decree in every part of my kingdom, people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. His dominion will never end. He rescues and he saves. He performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. So Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius in the reign of Cyrus, the Persian after Darius was gone. Lessons and points of interest here. The lion's den also symbolizes Daniel's captivity in Babylon, where God protected and sustained him because of his great faith. God was not concerned with man's laws. He said Daniel because Daniel obeyed God's law and was faithful to him. While the Bible encourages us to be law abiding citizens, some laws are wrong and unjust and are overruled by God's command. Daniel was taken into captivity around the same time that you already know these characters. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. King Nebuchadnezzar had those three thrown into a fiery furnace. They exhibited the same kind of trust in God. The men expected to be rescued, but if they were not, they chose to trust God over disobeying him, even if it meant death. They were not burned because of their faith in God. This teaches us God is about to fix about all of our problems, even the ones that we think will eat us up. I know that like Daniel, I must remain faithful to the Lord. It's easy to get sidetracked, but we really need to stay in trust in God. Problems do have a way of eating our lunch, especially when we try to handle them with our own strength. In this case, Daniel was supposed to be lunch for the lion, but God has other plans. Trust in God in every way and every day. Sometimes God will not answer our prayers, but that doesn't mean he does not love us. He just does not think it's coming for sometimes. Judging from the king's enduring decree after Daniel's deliverance, it appears he did learn a big lesson. King Darius decreed that all the people on the earth should tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God. To pray always and to forgive him. I hope this has touched some of y'all. There are lots of good information in the Bible. The Spirit led me to give this message. It's not that long. But I hope this has touched you because it touches me. So let's go out today, next week, this month. Finish this year and go on into the next. Remember that God loves us. We need to be more Christian in our daily life. We need to work with each other's way. And 
turn our back on the sinful ways of Southern Travis. Jesus is saying, Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Denny. That was a very nice message. Right here, let me see what we got. They went a little too far back there. There we go. All right. Now, now we all have our in sweet by and by. Hymn, sweet by and by, all.